なんで人が死ぬってのはよこんなに悲しいんだろうな。バトラー muttered。It was as though he was speaking on behalf of all humans. His question probably hadn't been directed at anyone, but Jessica answered. わかりはどんな形でもいつも悲しいさ。でもそれが例えばおいであるとかあらかじめ約束されていて。いつか訪れる別れであると分かっているものはその悲しみを長い時間をかけてそれを許されないから突然の不幸は悲しいんだろうよ<笑>なるほどなそりゃ病気にでもかかって何年も昏睡状態になってるよ<笑>少しずつある日突然じゃその暇もねえもんな本来なら数年をかけて薄めるべき悲しみがそりゃ辛いわけさ時には人の生涯に傷を残すほど深い悲しみを与えることもあるかもしれない生涯に傷を残すほどかじいさまのオカルト趣味もさそうささやかれてたんだよな例のベアトリーチェって愛人を大昔に亡くしてそれが悲しくて悲しくて立ち直れなくてそれで死者をよみがえらせるためのオカルトの研究にそうささやかれてた。だとしたらじいさまは最後の土壇場でその奇跡を成し遂げたな。犯人はよみがえったベアトリーチェでじいさまは殺される瞬間に再会できたってことになるぜ自分でよみがえらせてそれに殺されるとは皮肉な話さそれでもおじいさまは会えたんだろうね、sure、nice、人生の半分を落としてもう一度会いたいと願った女性にわずかなひとときとはいえ再会できたんだろうね丸焼きにされちまったけどな<笑> Thanks バトラー We need バトラー to say something stupid to fucking you know bring the mood back up a little bit But they got totally roasted dude got fucking cooked man got the well done treatment <笑>人生の半分をかけた研究にしてはちょいと割の穴そんなことはないよたとえほんのひとときであったとして愛した女性に再会できたおじいさまは幸せだったはずさ仮に生命の摂理に逆らった罪をその身を焼かれ地獄に落とされたとしてもその見返りの再会がほんの調子兄さん神の怒りに触れてこの身を焼かれようとも構わないわずかな時間でもいいからシャノンを再び蘇らせてくれるなら、ジョージ、ストップ。<笑>僕は残りの人生すべてを5分でいいから、シャノンともう一度言葉を1分でもいいから、それと引き換えに、すべての人生を捧げても。<笑>兄貴。バトラーとジェシカ理解して、彼らの無駄な話題が causing ジョージ pain。彼らは何も言わないで、閉まる口を。George directed his thoughts to Kinzo's life. He sacrificed half his life to research that no one understood. And the last day of his life, he revived the person he loved the most. Probably succeeded in his reunion in his final moments. George didn't know how much time they'd had together. He didn't know if they'd been given an hour or just five minutes. However, that moment must have been enough to reward him for all those months of research. Even though he spent dozens of years to achieve it, That small amount of time was probably more than worth it to him. Until today, I never believed in the occult or magic or anything. Somewhere in my heart, I even made fun of grandfather's research, thinking of it as nothing more than a pastime. However, I won't make fun of it anymore. No. To the contrary, I'll believe strongly that it's real. The power of belief can create miracles. I'll probably throw away all of my studies up until today. 
Spending the rest of my life from today onwards studying magic. Give me the power of magic. And give me a miracle that'll let me see Shannon again. ごめんよ、みんな。僕もどうかしてる。魔法で死者が蘇るくらいだったら世界中の人々が魔法を学ぶだろうね。でも現実にはそんなことはない。誰も学ばない。死者が魔法では蘇らないって知っている。ごめん
No, George, it's stupid religious bullshit. That's why. Not miracle that can rev revive the dead. Is because th the West was very religious. That has nothing to do with miracles, George. It's because Japan isn't a very Christian nation. There's not a whole lot of Christianity over there in the East. At least not in Japan. That I'm aware. I understand. I understand why grandfather idolized the Western occult. That was his only reason from the very beginning. You're telling me this whole time Kinzo's just been, you know, <laughs> practicing Christianity? <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, this whole time they're painting it as this crazy, like, black magic dark arts. <laughs> and this man's just been, like, fucking reading Bible verses and shit. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. Just to revive the person dear to him. Grandfather spent the rest of his remaining life researching Christianity. The situation surrounding us is now is abnormal. Grandfather did revive his beloved Beatrice. And that Beatrice has carried out a terrible serial murder several times over. But with linked closed rooms that forces to conclude that magic was used. The Golden Witch Beatrice. The incarnation of the miracle of Christianity. And also the culprit who killed Shannon. She's an entity I should hate. And yet, for some reason, I want to cling to her. I wonder if Shannon could be revived with the magic of miracles. Which grandfather bet his life on. According to the legend of the Ishiromiya family, grandfather met with her long ago and was given a vast quantity of gold. Then, I also met with her. Instead of gold, would she give me Shannon's life? As collateral, I don't care what sort of devil's contract she imposed. I wouldn't mind sacrificing all of my remaining life. George probably couldn't believe or realize that his voiceless wish was heard by the witch herself, who stood right behind him. The good witch? Okay, well not the good witch, but the better witch, for sure. <laughs> Beatrice had been listening to that entire dis discussion between the children just now in the cousin's room. Badler had told her that she didn't know the value of a human's life. And wanted to understand that in her own way, she had stealthily visited, listening in on their discussion. No. That's not the point, god damn it. Beto looked at the palms of both of her hands. She had handed over most of her once surging magical power when the new witch succeeded the name of the Endless Witch. Of course, her current power still made her worthy of being called a witch, but it could not begin to compare to her previous strength. God damn it. That's the thing, she's all about trying to prove it, you know? She's like, she wants to prove she's a witch. She wants to do like this big action that'll prove she's a witch, but that's not what that's not what they're looking for, damn it. He's not looking for this big major action and be like, oh look, look at that big awesome thing I did. I'm a witch, right? Like, come on. Inside her head, she thought about several magical steps she could take to revive the dead. Even magic that should have been easy in the past would be difficult with her current power. She thought of something, then clicked her tongue, then did so again, over and over. In the end, she finally thought of a single spell. That was a spell that she couldn't use by herself. It was a spell that witches with weak power used, one that relied on the aid of others. In the past, Beato had looked down upon that type of magic. Therefore, she frantically tried to search for any conceivable alternative. But in the end, she couldn't think of one, it slumped over in self-derision. Then, careful not to surprise him, she softly called out. Softly, to George's heart. ウシロミア
もしも前者だったならそして後者なら僕をそっとしておいてほしい。The conversation in a mental world was a lot like having one in a dream. When you dream, haven't you ever had the experience of casually accepting something that would have been absurd in the real world? The conversation in this world was like that. So even though a witch appeared and started talking to George, he was not surprised. <laughs> そなたがわらわのことを強く意識しこうして互いのチャンネルを合わせることができるシャノンを殺したのがあなたなのかあなたを名乗る何者かの仕業なのかただあなたが本当の魔女として存在しているならばどんな対価にも応じる僕の命を望むならどうかシャノンを生き返らせてほしいそれが無理ならせめて。わずかの間話をさせてくれるだけでもいいお願いだ対価はいらないその願い本当に本当にシャノンをだから半言の魔法を扱うのはだからそなたの手を借りねばならん僕にできることならどんなことでもそれが僕の心臓を今すぐこの場で取り出すことであったとして僕は躊躇しないそんなものいらぬと言うわらわは魔法を唱えさすれば冥府の扉に隙間だが今のわらわにはその隙間よりシャノンの魂を連れ出すしかしシャノンのことを強く思うそなたにその思いを魔力に彼女の魂をかなどうだわらわを手伝うか手伝うともシャノンの命がよみがえるなら僕は何を失うことも恐れないジョージ・フィッシュシャッキンサイレンス Then, his senses. He'd been absentmindedly staying near the window in the hall the whole time, his mug still in his hand. And The witch from his dream was still there. So. So now. You. You measure. No, he. She's a canny sail. Ima no warawa wa totemo moroi. Kono we sarani hoka no ninge made arawaretara. So nata no negai wa kanae rukara. Yoiku. Something's gonna happen. Like they're, they're gonna be like chanting the spell or whatever, and then. Like she said, like some other, someone else is going to show up and totally fuck it all up. George covered his mouth with both hands, nodding enthusiastically several times. In that instant, he almost dropped the mug he was holding. George frantically juggled it around and caught it. He was afraid that if it fell to the floor and made a loud sound, the witch's form might disappear like a bubble popping open. He softly set the mug on the floor and stared at the witch in front of him again. Her form didn't disappear. It wasn't a dream. So, Shannon got a murder cactus. Uh oh. So, not an old boy. Yeah, let's just casually go on over to the mansion. How are you going to do that, buddy? You could do it. Do you have to study what Kasan touching? I do. Oh, what they didn't know. You're just a creative. Okay, so any other was a key. Hope I don't need to get out of it. So, I don't want to know. So, I have a soda. Oh, yeah. Okay. Eito laughed as though she had thought of a pleasant prank. With her golden pipe, she lightly tapped a window with its shutter closed. When she did, three gold butterflies appeared from the pipe and opened the lock on the window, as though melting it. Then, the window opened without a sound. The shutter beyond it was exactly the same. The clasp unset itself, also without making a sound, and it quietly opened. The window opened, 
exposing the wind and rain outside the mansion. Perhaps because of the direction or something related to the construction of the building, the wind did not blow inside. Because of that, for a while, George felt as though this entrance that opened to the outside was a dream or an illusion, and he couldn't accept it as real. Hot. Beto gently floated upwards. It was a natural action like that of a diver enjoying an underwater stroll. It made it easy to believe that if you acted like she did, you too might be able to float in the sky just as though you were swimming through the water. No, George did believe that. So without thinking, just as she had done, he also, gently, as though swimming in the water, lifted his feet. Okay. <gasps> George was shocked to find himself floating in midair like he was swimming. Of course, Beato was also shocked that George, who shouldn't have been able to use magic, could figure out how to do that but just by instinct. Reject Newton, become bird. George repeated those words over and over. You must not deny magic no matter what. Denying that would be like throwing away what might be his first and last chance to revive Shannon. However, compared to Beato, who was eloquently drifting like smoke, George's movements clearly resembled someone underwater. Therefore, if he didn't act like he was kicking his feet in water every once in a while, he'd be caught, off by, the, he'd be caught by the force of gravity bit by bit. Hot. When Beato beckoned to George, gently flew into the stormy sky. It was just like a scene from a fairy tale. The scene unfolding before George's eyes felt entirely like an extension of his dream. George wore a strong world gaze, refusing to let the wind and rain get to him. The undulating rose garden was spread beneath the witch in George's gazes. This illusion-like scene no longer surprised George. Only the gradually approaching mansion was reflected in his eyes. Shut. Wait. I'll show you. I'll show you. 